Welcome back to Lonesome Outdoors. We are having a lovely boudoir session, so stay tuned for some info that I have just come to learn and some numbers. <music> Once again, coming to you from the bedroom, no need to be out in the shop for this conversation. I've brought all the examples in to show everybody. So a while back, we did a experiment with using Magnum pistol primers in, in, as, as a stand-in for large rifle primers. <clears throat> now, this test was originally conducted with 4570 and 3030 with some pretty good results. Now, I hadn't really gone into bottleneck cartridges with those yet. And I have now. So let's just jump into what happened. Now, I'm not the first person to have put Magnum pistol primers or large pistol primers into a rifle cartridge. They are the same diameter, but the Magnum pistol cups are just a tad bit shorter. So they seat deeper into your primer pocket. This is not a bad thing in a lever action rifle, where especially in a tubular magazine fed rifle, you have more, more recess is not a bad thing. And that primer pin is still gonna hit it. Believe me, we've tested it. So here we have the 4570 case. As you can see, if I can get it to focus. It, it, it popped off pretty normally. Um, did all right. Let me get some more lights on here. That's about all the lights I can do without backlighting myself too bad. But as you can see, popped in just fine. No, no major rings, went off just perfectly fine. <clears throat> We're shooting a 405 grain hard cast bullet for that one. Now things start to get a little dicey when we move it to 30, 30 6 In that case, I actually brought the bullet. In this case, we were shooting a Hornady interlock, 168 grain, boat tail. I was leaving the station 2750, thereabouts. I wasn't chronographing that day. As you can see, we got a bit of cratering. It's not a good sign. Definitely want to back off, but there's no reason you want to back off 2700 feet per second. And as you can also see, the primer's pretty damn flat. Now we move on to the 35 Hoyland. Shooting a 250 grain Spitzer flat bottom. Probably the same, it's, this bullet comes from northwest, Northeast Reloading. I haven't even had a chance to test it yet. I'll show you why. Uh, we were just talking about this in a comment with somebody. That's like, we were talking about my 35 Wayland post. So I'd, I'd shot the 35 Wayland with the Magnum pistol primers with Varget. Changed up my load to BLC-2. BLC, B, whatever, BLC-2. Flatter than a pancake and blew right out the back. <clears throat> now I check the head spacing. The head spacing seems good. Um, fire, firing pin protrusion. Seems all right. Might be a little bit higher, but we'll see about that. I do have some large rifle primers left over, enough to at least get me through hunting season and get this load tested up. My 30 out six load as well. I've got a recipe that's tried and true, so that won't be a huge issue. Just go back off my recipe and <clears throat> that way I don't have to waste as many primers, but I've got roughly about a hundred primers large rifle primers left. I can't really find any more around here in Billings, Montana. Can't really find many online either. They seem to get bought out pretty quickly. So for now, the next iteration of testing will be to put a large rifle primer and Varget in this round. I've also ordered some Hammer Bullet 200 grains. So I'm not getting the velocity I want out of these 200 grain bullets. I am running a 20 inch barrel, which does kind of limit me a bit but I opted for 20 inch barrel to lose velocity a little versus uh, have a longer barrel, less wieldy in the thicker woods 
of eastern of western montana <clears throat> won't serve me as well in eastern montana where i live but for that i could use my alt six as well what is kind of offset it and i've noticed on my chronographings even though this was punched out as bad as it was according to the book i'm pushing about 100 feet per second faster well 80 to 100 feet per second faster than what they were reading although they tested I believe with a 1 in 16 twist. Yep, twist rate 1 in 16. I have a 1 in 12. I don't know if that's aiding my speeds at all or if the altitude is aiding my speeds. That could very well be it too. But typically, with all of my rounds, I average anywhere from 50 to 100 feet per second faster than this book per loads. <clears throat> now, let's look at some pressures. In the Lyman's Manual, 50th edition. Your... Your cut pressure for my starting load was 40,300. Starting load. Max is out at 50,400. We'll flip over to the OT6. The OT6. 168 grain. I use 4350. Starting pressures of 38,000. Max pressures of 50,000. 50,400. Let's uh, get on over to 4570 government. For the Marlins. That very well could be it, right there. Starting pressure of 20,000. <clears> Ending pressure max of 27,000. Now that gun can handle a lot more than that, but that's what that round generates. So for that Magnum pistol primer to perform normally, makes sense. So let's look at something else I load, see what the pressures are there. 44 Remington Magnum, which is what I bought those for. I did a 280 grain. Starting pressure, 25,000 for my H110. Ending pressure, max, 32,000. So that's well within the pressure ratings for that cartridge. That puts the 45 pressure ratings well within the pressure ratings. Look at one more bonus round. Another one I've loaded for. Here it is. 30 30 Winchester. I loaded 170 grain with RL7. RL7's not listed here on this one. It is on this one. All right. 20,000. For a starting pressure, 20,200 for starting pressure for my hard cast, 170 grains, 34,000. So still within that rate that the uh, Magnum was in, I believe. The 2,034. <clears throat> 38, 37, 36, all seems to be max pressures for a lot of these rounds. So, disclaimer to my last video of using Magnum pistol primers in rifle cartridges. It's doable, depending on your application. If you're using rimmed cartridges, like 4570, 3030, I put them in 3040 Craig, we'll see how those perform. I imagine they'll perform fairly well. We'll look at it real quick. Oh, there it is, 3040 Craig. I'm using a pretty light load on that one. Like 150 grain. Let's just go with that 180. 38,000. It's still within that pressure points of those Magnum pistol primers. I'm sure with your 500 Smith & Wesson Magnums, it's going to be the same. So, if you're shooting pretty much a lever action cartridge or a pistol cartridge, 
your magnum pistol primers will perform just fine in your rifles. However, it will not perform very well in your bottleneck cartridges. So ye be warned. That's your, that's your tip for the day. Um, I believe that's where my fallings have come from. I think that it, just the weight of that bullet, just 250 grains versus 165 grains versus 175 grains, they were all performing, but obviously not optimally. I'm getting close to those weird pressure signs. I think if I put large rifle primers in there, I'll see a much better result. So we're gonna test that soon <clears throat> on the next video. I've currently got all my 35 Wayland brass in the tumbler. Um, I've got the ones that I didn't shoot because I stopped when I noticed I was blowing primers out in the tray ready to be downloaded, decapped, back to zero, all bargain. So we're going to go bargain. We're going to work up in loads. We're going to see where it goes. Um, so that's your tip. First tip, at least. Second tip, if you see them three in the bedroom, I've only been married for about three years, but I have figured out that I run hot. My wife, my wife runs cold, two different blankets. She's got the thicker blanket plus an extra blanket. I've just got the one. Makes for a much happier sleep environment. Makes for a happy marriage. So there's your second tip. Hey, y'all take care. Go hug your mamas if you can. Hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And watch for buyers. Take care. Thank you.